Hi, I'm Staley Weidman with the Catamaran Company from Fort Lauderdale. And this is Hubera, a Sun Reef 82, double deck, 2012, for sale now. Hubera has a great setup on the aft deck here. You've got this nice transom area with a deck on it, so you can set up chairs here, you can lounge, you can hang out on the back of the boat. In this space here, there is room for six dive bottles that have a special compartment that hold them in place so they don't rattle. And there's also a hose here that is attached to the dive compressor built into the boat so you can fill all your dive bottles here without having to take them out or having them on the deck. And when you're done, this closes down. It's nicely concealed. If you want to load tanks onto the dinghy, that's quite easy to do. You can even do it while the dinghy's here on the aft deck. Have the davits come out lower the dinghy in, full of dive tanks for your dive trip for the day. What I've never seen before on a catamaran ever is a really good place to store a jet ski that doesn't look obtrusive. In this space, in here, there's actually a full-size jet ski uh, or personal watercraft. Hubera has these fantastic retractable cleats. When these aren't in use, they lock down, they're totally smooth, they don't get snagged on anything. I'm building a Sunreef 80 right now. These are 5,000 euros a piece, and Hubera has them all over the boat. Really nice uh, upgrade. The boat was painted last year in La Ciota in France, so it's got a new paint job on the side of the hulls. Wow, what a great cockpit space we have here. Massive sun lounging pads. Nice garden here with bromeliads. Nice sun lounger pads all the way here. Got a huge dining area here. The table's in great condition. Shows very nice. More sun lounger pads, all protected. This can all be enclosed. All these covers come down. The teak is in great shape. It has been recently uh, sanded. We just wet it down, makes it look a little bit richer, but you can also see if there's any real imperfections in the wood, and it's just perfect. It's an easy set of steps to come up the flybridge. It's a spiral staircase. And there's these covers that slide over to uh, close this entire area. So if it's raining, you don't get rain down into the lower cockpit. Or if you have people up here and you're concerned about them maybe you know, misstepping, uh, you can close this area up here. This is a fitting that's uh, removable. There's one on the other side. And in the compartment where the personal watercraft is stored in the back, there's carbon fiber poles here that attach to a tent that covers this entire area. This is the other location for the poles that support the tent. So it goes from here uh, to there aft on the other side of the cockpit and then up forward. It's a very nice awning arrangement that covers this entire space. This is the sheet for the code zero it actually disappears behind this combing, comes down on the deck, pops out on the side, goes to a turning block, and then would go up to the code zero that would be deployed off the bowsprit, and there's an electric furling drum uh, contained in there. This line here is your Genoa sheet. Here is the sheet for the stay sail. That would go to this winch here. You'd Unlikely to be using both of them, but there's also uh, cam cleats here on the deck to store them. This is a Harkin 80, two-speed electric winch. You've got the high and low speed here. All right, so these buttons here control furling in your Jenniker or letting it out. Same with the Genoa and the same with the stay sail. All in and out buttons. These are all electric furling units. All right, so up here, this is your uh, port traveler line. We have the same line on the other side, starboard traveler line. You've got reef lines, halyards, lazy jacks, 
and another set of reef lines. All five of these winches are all electric, easy to control, easy to handle the boat. And once again, on this side, we have the same controls we saw on the starboard side. Jenniker in and out, Genoa in and out, stay sail in and out. On the flybridge, this is a uh, dining table. So it actually folds in half. It flips in half here, makes this nice settee, or opens up so you can have more people up here dining. What a wonderful place to have a breakfast or a late afternoon lunch. And then for the table to fold up so it's half the size, this just comes up, folds down like this, and these supports fold up and slide in. And like this. Right, now you're back to a much smaller seating area. On the starboard side of the flybridge, we have a very nice molded in bar module. Here you've got a propane grill, sink, great place to come up and have a cocktail. And in the reveal here, you've got a fridge and ice maker in this space. From the helm position here, you've got a full set of instrumentation. You've got chart plotter, radar, AIS uh, display here. This is all the boat's operating systems. Once again, we're looking at fuel levels, water levels, any alarms, uh, battery power, amps going in, amps going out, voltage, and being able to turn lights and things like that on. You've got the autopilot display here, wind instruments. We've got uh, depth and speed. This is the multifunction engine display. This will give us a lot of detailed information on the engine. Here we have two bow thrusters, one in the starboard hull, one in the port hull. They operate independently, so you can use them together or alone. We've got two windlass controls here. The starboard one is for our primary anchor. That's a much heavier gauge chain. And here, this is a lighter uh, secondary anchor. And this is a depth gauge specifically for anchoring. Uh, it's tuned in for shallower water, uh, so you can get a really clear idea what the bottom looks like before deploying the anchor. These are controls for the navigation lights and sailing lights. And of course, you've got a VHF and compass control here. Nice, comfortable helm. There's enclosures that go all around this, so it makes it a very secure cockpit uh, if you're underway. This front windscreen rolls up. There's uh, panels that go into the side. There's another set of panels here on the back. So the boat's got uh, twin Cummings diesel engines in it. And there's an inside lower helm. Great visibility inside the boat on that double deck. And the same set of controls we have here for the engines are also down below at that nav station so the boat can easily be maneuvered and handled underway uh, inside. On the aft deck, uh, this is aft of the flybridge living area. We've got plenty of space here for extra equipment. So we've got a sat dome right here for a TV. We've got a mini VSAT dome here for internet telephone, data communications, onboard, offshore, by satellite. There's plenty of space here for some additional uh, power generation. So we've got four sets of, uh, or four solar panels here, the same set we have there on the starboard side. And very, very unusual for a boat this size, we actually have two wind generators. So it's really set up for doing some long range offshore cruising and being very autonomous. That is one big solid carbon fiber boom. Uh, when you come back here, we'll get a look at it going forward. It is an enormous appendage. All right, so you have a, a uh, very robust traveler system here. This is all uh, some of Harkin's better equipment. You can see just how enormous these blocks are. These lines are the main sheet, and both the traveler lines are led to the forward 
section of the cockpit so it's easy for the captain to, to handle. Uh, in my hand here, I've got a um, boom stabilizer. There's another line there on the other side just to keep the boom still when you're, uh, when you're underway, if you're in rough water. Walking forward from the cockpit here on the starboard side, you have a 12 volt mooring capstan. There's one here on the starboard side and also one on the port side. It's nicely concealed in this space. As we walk forward, you got a nice welded solid uh, handrail here as you enter. Frameless flush deck hatches. Non-skid's been recently uh, redone on the boat. You got Spectra lifelines. And up here, as we get a little bit closer on the shrouds, full Kevlar, Aramid shrouds, great condition. Nice and clean. You notice we've got some pad eyes here on the deck. These are for uh, hanging something off the side of the boat, or if you wanted to add a pad eye for a Code Zero or a Spinnaker. And here, as we walk past it, this is one of the sheets for a Code Zero or Spinnaker on the, on the boat. It disappears into this space and re reappears up on the flybridge next to one of the winches. And then that line goes through this turning block and goes forward up to the Code Zero. Here we've got some more of those nice retractable cleats. Stainless on the outside to protect the nice paint job. This is a uh, metallic uh, all grip type of paint. As we go forward on the boat, you've got four deck lockers here. Each one of these is for the chain for the anchor windlass. You have two anchor windlasses. They're remotely controlled from the flybridge. Uh, and there's also a handheld device for it. Here we've got two furlers. One is a 24 volt furler for the stay sail. The next one is for the Genoa. And then in front, there's actually an electric motor for the furling concealed in that bow spread for the Code Zero. Really nicely outfitted, huge trampoline areas, bow pulpit seats, just really nicely finished. The Martingale is in perfect condition. A lot of times these parts on the catamaran see a lot of corrosion. This one's been nicely reconditioned. I don't see any signs of corrosion on it. It looks really clean. A new piece of Aramid rigging here across the front uh, to support the cross beam. Everything here is very clean, stainless is polished, the aluminum is in great shape, it's not pitted, I don't see any uh, corrosion on it. Uh, it really shows in, in great shape and you can see the quality of the workmanship that goes into the hardware that's fit on these sun reefs. Really great craftsmanship in all manners. Enormous full carbon fiber rig and a Park Avenue style canoe boom, once again all Kevlar. The front edge of this mast has LED illumination. You'll see some of the images that we took last night. Hubera is fit with 18 underwater lights. That's two shining inboard, two shining aft, a whole array down the side here, and actually two up in the bow that shine inboard underneath the trampolines. It's a really beautiful halo effect in the evenings. You can see how great this boat looks at night. The nice new paint job shows well. It's 82 feet, it's a lot of boat, isn't it? You can see the lights on the mast. Carbon fiber boom, carbon fiber rig. You've got a raised inside helm station here. This is the owner's cabin. All the way across in this space is the owner's cabin. Huge jacuzzi in here. Looking out forward, beautiful sunsets, beautiful beaches right from your full width 
owner's cabin. This is truly a spectacular world-class yacht. Eighty-two foot catamaran, thirty-four feet wide. Look at this owner's cabin. That is truly an amazing view. You can imagine waking up in that cabin, looking at a beautiful beach. Not too many of these babies built. This is a one and only.